So I recently had a good friend of mine working on a circuit and they were missing a diode. And I was trying to think of things that I could recommend, maybe steal it off of an old TV or something along those lines. Um, then the hacker in me came up with this idea. And the idea was this. A diode is just a PN junction. I've got a positively doped and a negatively doped area that are hooked together to create this depletion zone, which forms a diode. And um, I thought about a transistor, specifically a bipolar junction transistor, which seems pretty similar actually. We have an N region, a P region, and then another N region. And we've got terminals affixed to each one of these collector, base, and emitter. And so what I thought, right, is right like this, we have a diode, right? A P and an N junction, there we go. And so I wanted to set up a basic test to see if or how this would work. So the basic test was to set up a half wave rectifier. So the idea is if I send an AC signal that's biased around zero volts, if I send that into this circuit, what I should see is something along these lines. Where this negative is capped off. I build this diode circuit, and um, so I just have my diode and a resistor to act as a load. I apply my voltage across these two ends here. I build a similar circuit using a bipolar junction transistor. Specifically, I'm using a PN2222 transistor. And so I apply my signal across the base and, well, a load and connected to the emitter. And I want to see if I have the same effect. So let's go check out the experiment. So here's my circuit. Here I've got my diode, my resistor load, and it's hooked to a 60 hertz um, sine wave. Here's my bipolar junction transistor and also my 1000 ohm load. And let's take a look and see what our current result is. Well, it's a substantial overlap. You can't even really notice these two ways, but there's two there, I promise, I can show you, right? Um, they're almost, almost identical. The, uh, the green signal that we're seeing, that is the B BJT, um, and there's a slight, slight degradation, it's a little bit less than the diode. Um, and so at first this seems like it might just work fine, right? This works. That said, the, the signal frequency is relatively low, 60 hertz. I mean, it's a common frequency, but what about for higher frequencies? So as I start ramping up these frequencies, right, so now we're at 600 hertz, still seems fine. Uh, five kilohertz, we have some noticeable degradation there. Um, and check this out, at 62 kilohertz, 62 kilohertz, we start having this breakdown here in the negative region, which um, for a diode, this would, at least for a basic rectification circuit, this would be no good, right? Very much no good. And as I go up to 500 kilohertz, we've got a substantial breakdown. And in experimenting with this, I found that if I tie my collector to my base, I can actually... Um, mostly mitigate that effect, but we do see this small ramp, reminder that the green is the transistor circuit. Um, I do have this um, still undershoot where we're getting a small negative voltage and I've got this ramp upwards. And that can, I mean, that can be attributed to the fact that transistors really aren't built for this. I know in the sketch that I showed that they look very similar, but um, physically, um, there's differences in here that make it not optimized for this operation. And 
um, the diode is optimized for this sort of operation. And then one of the last things that I had kind of thought about while experimenting with this is we have a PN junction here, right, P and N. We also have a PN junction here. And when we learn about transistors, we kind of think of uh, conventional current flow that we want to have. But what my question was, was can I use this PN junction as well? So let's go try that out as our last little experiment here. So first what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my load. I'm going to remove my little jumper here. And I'm going to set us back to um, 60 hertz. And then I'm going to put my load I'm going to put my load right on the collector. And I do not recommend making changes to live circuits, even if they are low power. Um, so let's see what we got. We'll zoom out here and look at a bigger view. And we're also going to have to zoom out here and check it out, right? Here we've got, um, we, at a lower frequency, we still have this um, ramping effect, which we didn't have when we were um, using the base to emitter circuit. Um, but there definitely is that ramping effect. Um, and the moment I start upping my frequency, we get some very, very bad behavior. Um, so this is almost looking like just our, our source sine wave. Um, so that indicates that uh, running from base to collector it's really going against the way that this transistor was designed. Um, well, it, it, yeah, it's just not ideal for this behavior, and so we see a very non-ideal rectification circuit. So um, I guess in closing, I would just say that these aren't really tricks that you learn in electronics um, classes, um, but it's really useful just to get curious about this sort of stuff. and. Uh, an experiment because I mean worst thing you do is you light a breadboard on fire but at least you'll have learned something.